Are you excited by this sale? Of course you are. Of course I am. <laughs> I came up with the concept, so I better be excited. Ah, you know. <laughs> so wh wh where, do, where does this concept come from? The concept was, a, you know, of multiple things, but the concept was a response to the new world that we live in. Uh, so it wasn't that I had this plan for, uh, it wasn't that I had this plan for a long time. It was a response to um, the world that came to be. Uh, so it was really just born in April. Uh, it was born out of, um, you know, out of an idea, out of the new situation. Um, we all got, we all needed weeks and months to accommodate to what's, what's happening. Um, on one hand, I feel the, the Zoom society, for lack of a better word, um, made us more distance, but also brought us closer together. So, you know, we need to do what we do best or what the only thing that we do is sell paintings and sell paintings at auction um, mainly. And I saw the concept of having a global approach Paintings can travel. People can't travel. So this was the one that this was one idea that was behind it. Um, entertainment. Uh, how can you make it entertaining if you're not physically there? So you can at least bring the. If we can't go out into the world, let's bring the world in our living room. So I thought the concept of the four cities where we have our locations with Hong Kong, Paris, London, New York, and different auctioneers in their in their native languages, um, uh, holding the auctions with the surrounding. It gave me flexibility, which I needed, because that's one thing that I think Corona also taught us. We need to be tomorrow is, we don't know what tomorrow brings. Now we know a little bit more, but before we didn't. So I needed to be flexible. So, you know, when, I, when, when this concept uh, developed, I didn't know where Hong Kong was, where Paris was, where London was, where New York was. Um, you know, further going in, I knew Hong Kong was going to come out and in Hong Kong, it's going to be a regular sale. So we have an auctioneer up there. There's going to be people in the room. There's going to be people on the phone. Looks like in Paris, we can do the same thing. Um, in London, we're probably still going to have a very limited amount of people in the, in the room. And in New York, it's the same thing. So it's adjustable. And that's what I felt that, that you know, the world has become to people are, people are used to seeing things. Um, on the screen and communicating or getting information over the screen much more. I think what this what this has done is accelerated uh, a movement that we're, you know, anyway we're going to. But all of this was accelerated. So what happened in the last three months would have probably happened in the next three or four years. And um, tell me, do you think that people are in the mood of buying art today? I know that people are in the mood of buying art. How do, um, how do I know? We? Oui. Well, I sell art. <laughs> <laughs> Come closer. I can't hear you well. So, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So you you made a lot of private deals. You mean? We made we made good private deals. We made some. You know, we made some. You can also judge by guarantees and third party guarantees how the mood of people is. How many people are calling? So uh, give me some figures about guarantees. I don't have any figures in front of me because I'm not. I'm. I'm just about to close the sale, so the figures will come in the next couple of days. I just don't have them together yet. Okay. So, but it's huge. You mean? It's not huge, but it's 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 normal. You know, it's it's not different than it normally is. It's a very similar balance as it normally has, which tells me something. Which and can be half or less than half. About. Yeah. Yeah. About that. Third part guarantees, right? Third party, third party guarantees, yes. <clears throat> okay. Less than half, but again, I, I have to look at the numbers exactly. You okay. know, I just I work, work, work until the end, and then I look at the result. Good. Me too. <laughs> there you go. You know, that's what we have to do. Okay. And so, what what is the mood? What 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 people? What do collectors desire today? Because the world is different. The world is different and, you know, it's definitely, look, do we really know what people desire? No. I follow the strategy and the one sale follows the strategy because that's what we decided to do. I wanted to build a sale, number, number one. It's different because I'm combining the 20th century. So I'm kind of combining impressionist, modern and post-war and contemporary. I'm combining all these categories. Uh, 
I'm combining certain national aesthetics, if you want to. So the Parisian part of one is uh, is is more focused on Parisian taste, and the New York part of one is more focused on New York taste. Just because, again, people can't travel, I need people to see the paintings. We still have exhibitions, so we need to we need to we need to make it appetizing. I feel today that, and that's my. That's my feeling from what we've done privately and from the interest levels I've received is I can move um, very good quality. So I am not at the highest price level or at the top price level, let's say $20 million and above. There's actually quite an appetite because there are very few high quality paintings out there because most of the collectors that have these paintings, and it's not just about the price, it's also it's a combination of price and quality, not want everything that's keep. $20 million is good. Um, don't want to sell, because most of them are you know, in a, in, a, in a good place, let's say, and they don't want to sell, so therefore I have more buyers than sellers in this price category. So the sale is very, is, is, is quite heavy on the, on the top end. Um, so, Which but uh, for example, the, the Picasso is completely a French taste. I mean, it's insp inspired by Delacroix, which is at the Louvre, 100% French taste, but it's in America. Well, it's also American taste. You know, the last one ended, the, 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 the last Gans, one, uh, And uh, it uh, comes uh, from the Gans collection, right? I exactly. Mean, the last one. The yeah. Last one. Yeah. Okay. And no, but Picasso is a global taste. You know, that's the great thing about Picasso. You can put uh, Picasso. You can put in any. Uh, I could put it in Hong Kong. I could put it in New York and London and Paris. With Picasso, it doesn't matter. And it's uh, it, what's the estimate? Sorry for that. Twenty to uh, twenty-five to thirty-five uh, million. Yeah, in the, in the, I think we're quoting twenty-five million dollars. And so, uh, what is it? A conservative price. I think, you know, these, this series is obviously something that is very desirable. The last Van Dalger, as you, uh, Van Dalger, as you know, made almost $150 million, was a bigger painting. Uh, but it's not, they're not easy to come by. So I think it's actually an attractive price. And this is one of the paintings that I, that I feel very comfortable that, I, that you're going to see competitive bidding in the auction. Okay. What does the other stars? What are the other stars? Um, so if you if you if you go into the contemporary segment, you have, you know, that's a very American taste. For instance, to give you something more of a local hero, Wayne Tebow. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but yeah. um, um, this is, you know, this is one of the the he, he turns a hundred years old in a month. I think he's one of the last ones standing of his generation. Americans always loved his work. He's a he's a if you want to the West Coast pop, um, he's at the same time as Ed Ruscha. Eh? Yeah, you know, we this big pro sorry, sorry. The Ed Ruscha is amazing. The Ed Ruscha is another star. Um, so but I'm trying to get top quality works. Look, the Tebow, I can say nine out of ten people will say this is probably the best Tebow to come to the to the market in many many years, and probably the best in private hands. With the Ruscha, you could also say Annie. 19, both of these paintings are 1962, so the birth hour of pop. And, um, and what does it? What's the story about this Annie? The story about Annie is that you know the, the, the I don't know how 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 well known it is in Europe. I'm Austrian, but I didn't know the story before. But since I am in America, um, it was uh, the little orphan Annie. It's a cartoon, so it's very Warholian in spirit. If you think in 1962, you know. Um, Warhol painted Batman and Superman paintings, uh, Ruscha painted Annie, uh, and he didn't depict her, but he took the, uh, he took the words. So it's a very, yeah. it's, it's very pop spirit. If you think it's based on a cartoon character, it's, it's quintessential pop art. Uh, so there you have the pop representation and then and, the other uh, thing. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And what, uh, what do you estimate for that? The Ruscha is twenty to thirty million dollars, and the uh, Tebow is eighteen to twenty-five. Uh, so, what about twenty? How can you how can, how can you estimate this Annie to twenty for twenty? How how can I estimate it twenty? Well, I had I had in the last auction I had Radio, 
which was from 1964, uh, that sold for 50, 45 million dollars. So I think 20 is actually, a, a, you know, the right estimate. And so do you care for the situation around to, to give the estimate? Because I spoke to the other specialists all around the world and they just say, we don't care. As it's excellent work, it will go for high prices and we have settled uh, estimate like if it, if it would have been in February or January. What do you think? Well, look, in my opinion, on the, on the top end of things, so on the high quality, that's why I said this to you before, on the high quality, what I see, what I feel is no shift in the market. So... Did I respond to that? Did, did I reflect upon the estimates? Absolutely. Did I try to get better estimates? Absolutely. I always do. But am I concerned? Like, look, where where I push hard on estimate is on the lower value price points. When you have pieces that are not A plus, there I think you need to be responsive to what's going on in the in the world around us. The the normal people that buy art, not the super people that buy art, there it makes a difference. It makes a difference for me and you. It makes a difference what happened in the last couple of months. Um, so, so, so there, there is a difference there. So I see in the day sale category, on the lower end evening sale category, in the price category up to two million dollars. Let's just say. Um, for lack of better comparison, it makes a difference. And there I push hard my colleagues to, uh, you know, to lower estimates and talk to consigners about, uh, about being more conservative in the approach. Absolutely. It would be, it would be too, uh, you know, it would be naive to think that this has not an impact. Okay. Okay. So you think that, uh, the higher level will be preserved. I think so, yes. As usual, in fact. As actually, if you look at the last 20 years, every time we had, you know, this is a, this is a new one with Corona, but we, were, we lived to 2008 and 2009 and in 2004 and 5, the, the, you know, the tech bubble exploded. The quality works always stayed the same. You have high prices throughout for exceptional works of art. Because you know what? The, the collectors that are buying in the top category um, think that they might see something, they might have an opportunity to buy something that they normally don't have. It's not about the 10% or 20% discount. It's about the opportunity to buy something that they couldn't buy before. So the Corona price is a phenomenon which just belongs to the less than $2 million work? <laughs> The Corona, I mean, we'll see after the auction what it really means, because that's the real price. You know, we had some online auctions, but these are not real indicators. We will know at next week after Sotheby's and then in two weeks after our sale, we're really what will, if there is a Corona price. I have so many calls from collectors and stopped now, but throughout this, uh, this off season, uh, what is the discount? Is it 20%? Is it 30%? Is it 50%? Is it nothing? You know, we don't know. We need to see the results because until then it's all theory. Uh, but I think you need to give uh, on the lower, on the sub million, uh, sub $2 million category, I think you need to be fair and respect that and, and you know, m make an incentive. And, you know, the only incentive that we can do is overpriced, quite honestly. Okay. Because when you when we think about the crisis in, in, at the beginning of the 90s, for example, the Basquiat, were discount do you remember or you are too young yeah no i i i i didn't i didn't i was still in vienna but um i did not i i, I know what happened but that was a you know that was a long one i'm hoping we're not long one in 1990 everything collapsed um and all the prices went down so yes you're absolutely right 30 years ago we had a super collapse but it was also you have to think that the, the what I know about this time, the prices were driven very high by, especially by Japanese collectors, by, yeah. by big corporations, and and the market didn't follow. 
you also, 30 years ago, the market was very different. 20 years ago, it grew exponentially. We had so many more people. When I started 20 years ago in the auction business uh, as an intern at Sotheby's, um, it was, you know, it was a small market. I started in contemporary art. The evening sale was $40 million and everyone thought it was an amazing, amazing result. And you had... 10 collectors that would spend more than $10 million on a contemporary but work. This time, the estimate, the global estimate for this one auction is $200 million, right? A little bit more. Like what? $250? Two fi more than $250. I, again, I, I haven't counted. I'm, I'm counting this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, yeah, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's more than $250. And, and uh, normally the season in New York is... What, more than one billion, right? No, no, it's not. On a regular, on a regular, I mean, between all the auction houses, yes. You're right. Between all the auction houses, are yes. But if you think one auction house like at Christie's, we normally have, you know, a two to three hundred million dollar evening sale in Impressionist and a two to three hundred million dollars. So maybe so three, double. Uh, double. So this one is definitely smaller. You know, it's less, it's less pieces. Uh, we have about 80 works in the one sale. Normally, you have about, you know, at least 60 lots in each of these categories. So you're, so I dropped the volume because, quite honestly, I also thought that was a reflection of the time. I'm dropping the volume. I'd rather stay up in the quality and drop the volume than the other side.